Oh! There it is. Awesome. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> Whoa. Hey everyone, Sean Savin Moo, and man, do we have a treat for you today. We are paying homage to the great, you know, short game artist that is Phil Mickelson. You saw our little intro there, right? And that's our cheap imitation of the master at work, but it is something that is really cool for you to picture and do for yourself. And we're gonna show you how using this simple grass whip will really make you understand how to hit the perfect flop shot in any situation. Stay tuned. But of course, before we start, we would love for you to join us and subscribe to Wisdom in Golf. Please give us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Be sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Notice I got the mic. <laughs> first things first, you need to know how this puppy works. Now, the golf club, especially the lob wedge, is a grass cutting tool. It's a gardening tool first and foremost. So let's have a look first and foremost how this works with a regular ball and tee, all right? You guys step over here. So if I take a ball and a short tee and I put it in the grass right here, and I take my grass whip and I'm going to whip it through the tee. So notice the grass whip's on the ground. If my full-time job is to cut grass, I'm just gonna whip this tool along the surface of the grass. When I do that, see how the ball stays right there? That is exactly how a flop shot works. So if we look at I'm on my slope here, and what I want to do is I want to whip the grass whip through the dandelion stem, and my eyes are on the grass between the whip and the ball. I'm not trying to hit the ball. I'm trying to cut the grass at, at ground level. Notice I cut the grass right out from underneath, and the ball just rolls off the slope. So once you know how this works, and you know how to master that shot, you're simply cutting the dandelion stem and then we just take the golf club which is thy wedge and the leading edge of that club that's why you want a low bounce wedge you notice phil's uh, lob wedge is normally 10 to 8 to 10 degrees and it's got the back of the the sole of the club ground out so it's very easy when you set it down and you want to cut through the dandelion stem. See that? So my club is in the center. My ball is forward. I see the leading edge ready to cut through the stem. And notice how easy it is. And you see how lovely that ball takes off. But my attention is not on putting the ball to the face. My attention is taking the sole of the club through the stem of the dandelion. So I'm literally sawing through the stem of the dandelion in the direction I want that ball to go. So if you look at down the line and we do the same thing, most of you are thinking, hey, when I open up the face, the ball's gonna go more to the right for the right-handed player. That's not true. If I have an open face chip, and you've seen this in, in the past, there's my intermediate point. If I'm doing a normal chip, it'll look like that. Notice it's going straight out. If I do an open face chip, I'm gonna set up normally, turn the face open 45 degrees, and all I'm gonna do is cut through the dandelion stem. Notice the ball never went to the right. That's because there's too much loft. And if I stay on my path, the ball will go straight. So I'm doing the same thing with my flop shot I'm going to take it in that direction right there. So I'm playing the club in the center, ball forward, and now I'm sending my momentum in the direction of that intermediate point. Ball landed right behind that intermediate point. 
So now when you get to this particular shot, what I want to do is cut the dandelion stem up the slope. So I'm seeing a stem to cut and I'm staying up the slope with my cut. And notice, <laughs> it doesn't go very far, does it? So now I'm going backwards this way for, you know, and Phil's a lot better at that than me. It's the lie he's on. You, you can't go that way. The green's running away from you and you probably duff it in the bunker, but he saw a way to take it because he has all that room under the lip of the bunker, whips it up the lip of the bunker and then drives it backwards. And now the ball is coming from a much higher position land soft and he scoots it pretty close to the pin okay let's see how our local lefties can do on this one so Moo's going to start off with cutting through the dandelion stem so your eyes are on the grass yeah. and you're just going to cut through the tee and let the ball fall to the ground yeah. all right now the feel that you're looking for yeah. is that notice you kind of caught the ground a bit before the ball? Yeah. So you want to feel the speed out here past the tee. Okay. So show me how you're going to cut through the tee. Yes, exactly. Okay. Not bad. So, yeah, I know it's gonna, it's good. The toe is gonna bottom out pretty good because you got a lot of velocity. Yeah, so, I got a lot of. Yeah, so just use a little bit of velocity. Just let the arms fall through that T. Okay. There, feel that? Yeah. Awesome. So you notice how you cut the legs out from under the ball. That's yeah. what we, we call, you know, you hear the commentator say that on the, on the, on the tour all, all the time. So if we take that, to the slope here, there's your dandelion. Okay. Yes. So set up, yeah. line it up with the slope, play it a little bit more back in the stance. Okay. That's forward. That's forward. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Now, do you see the stem to cut? Yeah, I do. Do you feel like you're following the slope? Right, yeah, I do. Good. Let it cut up the slope. Yeah. Superb. Wow. Superb. So, this is the ball hanging on the lip here. You got your lob wedge now? Yeah, I hope so. So you open up the face. Yeah. Plenty more. Yeah, hands forward. Okay. There you go. So you feel like you're whipping up the slope through the stem? Yeah, I do. Good, let momentum whip it up the slope. Awesome, that, that was just a little off the toe there. Yeah, so it's but probably away from the ball. Though. Just a little bit. Yeah. But your swing was perfect. Notice, notice how you follow the slope perfectly. Yeah. Oh, dude, that was a great swing. Hands forward. Yeah. Open the face more. That's it. Cut right through that stem. There it is. Backwards it goes. Awesome. Nice job. Sav. There you go. Ditto. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the grip's so big in my hand. Oh my gosh, she could have chopped somebody's head off. <laughs> I can't wait to see that in stop action. Wow. Oh, that was hilarious. We, we, should, we should do that as the first scene. <laughs> yeah. That was fun. Okay, Sav, you're good with that. So we won't, uh, we won't tempt fate any more than that. <laughs> right on cue. Look at that. So all, well, it's a mini one. Yeah. But imagine if the green was right here, that had trickled perfectly onto the green. So now just add more momentum up that hill. Give it a nice sling up the hill. Awesome. I like the mini ones. You like the mini ones? <laughs> I want to try one more. Hey, how about that? So, we hope you enjoyed this special edition, Phil Mickelson 
for the flop shot and uh, we hope to enjoy Phil for many more years to come. Stay tuned for uh, the second half of this video where we talk about the longevity and how we predicted back in 2016 when Phil made the change to his new coach how he opened up his swing and removed all the restrictions in his swing and started free flowing some more and that led to way more longevity of course his his so-called diet that he's not enjoying so much if you if you saw the interviews and in the in in the recent win uh, you could see that he's still struggling with that but i can attest that that 36 hour fast uh, really helps the joints big time so enjoy the second half we'll see you next week And uh, so man, maybe him and Brand Brandel had a, a little conversation because he's talking about how, you know, the modern swing is wrapped up in a back brace. And we completely agree with that here at Wisdom in Golf. And we have been teaching a strain-free, free-flowing swing for over 20 years now. And when we look back, because of the anatomy of the human body, we had to look back and, you know, from the, the 1900s, through the 1960s to find the best material that respected human anatomy. Bobby Jones, Walter Hagen, uh, Gene Sarazen, uh, uh, you know, Byron Nelson, Sam Snead, Jack Nicklaus in his prime in the 60s and 70s. Is, he moved beautifully with this. So I want you to put your attention to the part of the spine here between the pelvis and the rib cage. And you'll notice here's the sacrum. This is your tailbone. And every vertebrae, starting with the sacrum, has a built-in stopper in it called a facet joint. And the facet joint is to prevent the vertebrae on top of that one from spinning out. If it spins out, cut your spinal cord, you're in big trouble. These are the protectors of your health, okay? So now, this is not meant to, to twist here. It's a buffer zone in case you make a wrong move at some particular point. It's not made to torque up. So now, if you resist with the lower body, you got your legs and your pelvis here, and you're, you're really trying to hold on with the legs and prevent the legs from turning, well, the leg is the hip. You know, the hip bone's connected to the leg bone, and we, we know how that song goes. Well, it's all, it's a whole domino effect. We're dealing with the whole body. We're not dealing with a sum of body parts, okay? So you never go body part thinking when you're playing golf. You always want to, you know, swing with a whole body experience, always. So now, since this is not going to give, if you coil this up against this, all you're going to do is wring out the tissue between each facet joint and you're going to create a premature deterioration of that spine for absolutely nothing. And for those of you out there who think that by, you know, you're going to be way more powerful and the guys have, you know, they're looking at shorter uh, careers right now, but they think they can perform better, that's all horse hockey, okay? We're not built that way. And thank goodness we have some, some very like-minded individuals right now in a spotlight that are going to really shed some light on the situation. We're there to back them up big time, okay? So that's not going to turn. This coils against this. You're in trouble, so don't do that. So that's why we talk about, if you look at, you know, we've, uh, we've had some conversations of Bubba Watson. And if you look at Phil Mickelson in his prime, when he first got on in the scene coming out of college golf, he had a narrow stance, feet were towed open, had a huge backswing with the lead knee coming behind the ball. It was awesome. He actually had both feet solid on the ground. He was already set, okay? So there was no nip and tuck needed. There was just, hey, where am I going? And how am I going to get there? And I'm going to feel this, and we're just going to perfect the art of finding targets. So now, thank goodness, you know, I think uh, Phil speaking this way just elongated his career well into the Champions Tour, whereas other players are not as lucky. Other players are already struggling with back problems way before their mid-40s. I want to release to the target, and, you, and this, this you can start doing at any time in your career, right? So we can just 
allow the body to fully turn in the backswing. So how does that work? Well, the best way to go about it is to is think about, you know, when you're going bowling. All of you have bowled before. I'm going to take my kettlebell right here, and you'll notice that the shoulders only have 20 degrees of range on top of that rib cage. They don't have 90 degrees of range. That doesn't exist. So when you're using rib cage and pelvis on top of the hips, your hips are the ball socket system. That's where the turntable is. The turntable is not in your vertebrae. They're not built for turning. They're built for staying secure and to have that beautiful central nervous system fire on all cylinders. You start kinking up that thing and then you're gonna reduce performance everywhere in the body. So I wanna take this kettlebell, let's say I'm, I'm bowling with two arms and I'm gonna to bowl towards you. Well, if I don't remove my body out of the way, all I'm gonna do is crash my arms into my rib cage. So what I wanna do is allow my left arm full freedom into the backswing. So don't let the left arm hit you going back and don't let the right arm hit you coming through. So notice my right arm is free to go that way. My left arm is free to go that way. So when you remove the obstacles and you say, okay, all I'm gonna do is not let my arm hit me. So you see what happens? The legs start actively participating in your swing without you thinking about it. And that's, you are your own self-preservation system. You know, we've, we have some evolutionary experts here at Wisdom in Golf that tell us that, hey, we've been around for two and a half to four million years, and there's a reason for that. It's like we're gravity geniuses. If I'm skipping a stone on water, I'm gonna take the stone and skip it out there. The first thing that's gonna happen is the brain's gonna go get the ground. And it's gonna use the ground to get the body out of the way so I have access to my target. Well, there's my ball, there's my stone, throw the stone into the ball. Well, I don't have to shift my weight or clear my hips. I'm already facing the target. So now, if that's your target, and then you'll see a, a beautiful video I did with my daughter called Be Savvy With Your Chest. This will get you the wherewithal as far as whether you're a man or a woman, you have to have access for those arms to swing freely. So, you know, the, the tour players are, are being much more aware of that. They're more astute of that. But Bubba Watson's played that way his whole life. Tom Watson could be a poster boy for what we teach here at Wisdom and Golf. And, and the list goes on. Hale Irwin, you got to check this guy out. Why do you think he's got 45 wins on the senior or the champions tour? I mean, Bernard Langer's not going to catch him. So the longevity has a purpose. Tom Watson, you know, did not, did not play, did not finish in only four events in 40 years. What does that tell you? So Phil's on the right track. Brandel's on the right track. Uh, Peter Costas is talking about the same thing, and the list is starting to grow pretty significantly, and uh, it's, it's all, you know, revolving around what we do, and so if you really want to learn how this works, and you want to instill it in your own system, give us a call.